Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread, where it's food as it should be, and soup season is upon us. Panera Bread has some of my favorites, the creamy tomato, broccoli cheddar, and the vegetarian autumn squash. You can sense the pattern. I'm a vegetarian. Perfect for the chill in the air and that warm feeling inside. Getting mine for lunch today. Hope to see you at Panera Bread. Reading with Robin also brought to you by the Book Box. It's not too early to start thinking about that perfect holiday gift for the book lover in your life. A carefully curated box with the best books of the season, plus a few special treats, is the best gift ever. Please visit thebookbox.info. Again, that's thebookbox.info for more info. And now, enjoy the show. This is a thrill, and it is unbelievable that after all these years of hosting Reading with Rob, and this is our first interview on, on a podcast, the author of some of my most treasured books. She's come undone. I know this much is true. We Are Water, and now a library pick for I'll Take You There. It's their November pick. Also, I'll Take You There, Wally's brand new book, a Reading with Robin 2016 favorite. Wally's an evening with authors alum. We had such a great time, and I can't wait to see him again this Thursday at Barnes & Noble in Warwick. Welcome to Reading with Robin Wally. Hey, Robin. Good to talk to you again. I, uh, I, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing you in Warwick as well. We will all be there in full force. We've been posting about it, and people that missed you, unfortunately missed you when you are here in October, I said, well, the good news is he's coming back for more of Rhode Island. So we're yeah, very Yeah, like a excited. bad penny. <laughs> <laughs> the very best of the bad pennies, exactly. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. you're welcome. They do such a great job, and there's lots of room for everybody at Barnes & Noble. It starts at 7 o'clock on Thursday, and it is really a treat to get to talk to you about I'll Take You There. And I understand the whole meta book thing. I'm so impressed that I figured out it's not complicated, (laughs) but I remember when you were here sort of saying, you know, help us out, explain this. And for the listening audience, certainly explain this, but it is such a full experience. And I didn't realize that initially that's how it was coming out and your fans were clamoring for a hard copy. Well, MetaBook is a a young company and um, I met with uh, the publisher, Ken Simon, and he showed me the prototype. It was a a, a MetaBook version of uh, John Barron's book from several years back, Midnight Mm -hmm. in the Garden of Good and Evil. Uh, And I I was so wowed by you know, what they did with the story in addition to the electronic text um, Mm -hmm. that he said, would you write something original for us? And I said, "Um, well, I'll give it a shot. And so I thought that this was just going to be a sort of a side project, a short thing. Uh, But, you know, I never know where I'm going with my, (laughs) with my writing (laughs) until I write it, Robin. Uh It turned into a full blown novel. And then, um, you know, when, when I announced that it was coming out as a meta book, you know, uh, people who like to read more traditionally were, you know, expressing their disappointment. So, um, <laughs> so I said, well, we'll, uh, I'll see if Harper, my uh, usual publisher, would uh, would be interested in publishing that. So, um, hopefully, it's the best of both worlds for people who are, you know, tech inclined and people who are not. So you. Wally Lamb, give your readers and and the people that you surround yourself with so much of yourself, so even more with this. So you heard the cry of the people, and they said, I'm thinking I'm calling it the meta book, so it's meta book. Now I sound like the Mm -hmm. HBO. So (laughs) talk about your baby boomers that you wrap into this book. So meta book, okay, I understand. So you were writing something for them specifically, and it turned into this amazing like book within a story and an experience thank you very much i was watching the the trailer i actually downloaded it too i don't know if i did it properly i'll have to go to itunes and uh, i think i might have ordered it twice but that's okay (laughs) (laughs) well we don't mind that (laughs) no just keep ordering it buy me buy me log into your (laughs) itunes account and hit buy me so you can watch it on your ipad and listen to it but i also been listening to janice ian all morning let me explain to your readers what, it, what exactly they'll get in the meta book. Um, uh, as, as you mentioned, it's a download uh, from the Apple uh, App Store. That's hard mm-hmm. to say, Apple App. <laughs> um, and uh, 
and then uh, you know you can you can read the electronic text right on the right on your tablet or whatever, um, and you can also listen to um, an audio dramatization of that as you're reading. And we've got some great people performing. Uh, Kathleen Turner uh, plays um, the ghost of a silent Amazing. film director, and um, uh, Dana Delaney is in it, and mm-hmm. uh, Jeremy Sisto from uh, the Law yep. and Order series, uh, yeah. and and Laura Benanti. So they do they do. I just began to listen to the audio uh, play myself, mm-hmm. um, and I also should say that there is uh, an audible version uh, with a single narrator, uh, and that is. Um, that's the great George Goodell, who does such beautiful work with my with my material and with others. So there's two audio versions that you can watch. But the meta book, uh, as you mentioned, has a soundtrack uh, about eight uh, eight different songs with um, uh, with probably the the key one being the old Janice Ian song at yeah. 17. She does a beautiful gorgeous, um, gorgeous acoustic song. version of it. Yeah, she's a really nice woman. I know her a little bit. Oh, and um, wow. and then and then you know there are uh, a couple of documentaries. If people don't know who Lois Weber was, she was back in the teens and twenties. She was right there at the beginning of uh, movie history, and uh, she's been long since forgotten. So I decided to bring her back to life as a ghost who haunts an old vaudeville theater. I think and, that is uh, so awesome and clever. And that's one of the things I love so much about reading. I'll take you there. And on the phone is the Wally Lamb, best-selling author, extraordinaire. You can visit his site, wallylamb.net. You can find him on Twitter. But one of the things that I love about reading a book like this is wanting to learn more and, and the experience of doing some research, putting on some music, and having it take you, well, having it take you wherever, where the, wherever it's going right. to take you. And that's the thing. I did not know anything about Lois Weber, a woman before her time, it would seem. Mm-hmm. So what was the research like, and, and how did you pick her to bring her back into the Squadville Theater? Well, you know, when I had a little book uh, come out uh, yes, in 2009 Hope. called Wishing yes. and Hope, right? And, um, yeah. and so they made a movie of that, and we had the, the premiere for the movie at uh, this old vaudeville. Uh, uh, it had been a vaudeville theater in New London, Connecticut, uh, and they also showed uh, what were then called picture plays. Uh, okay. They were silent movies. Anyway, um, I started doing some research on the guard, and uh, it mentioned that uh, the first uh, silent film that they showed there back in 1926 was a Lois Weber film. Oh. And I'm scratching my head thinking, now, wait a minute, there were women in uh, women producers and directors back in the day. You know, there, there are so few opportunities sure. for women these days now right so i began to sort of you know open one door on another door and she turned out to be a really fascinating uh person in the you know in the early years who has since sort of faded away so um uh you know people like uh dw griffith and you know florence zigfeld and all all those folks the united artists um you know actors uh pickford and chaplin and all all those folks you know they're still remembered, but uh, mm-hmm. poor Lois, I I thought she needed to have a her time in the spotlight too. Will you certainly shine the spotlight on her? And also, I, one of the things that I love about your writing is always the strong female characters, and you dedicate this book for feminists everywhere of every era. And when writers bring people back and have this sense of out of time, in time, ahead of their time and get that conversation going, I think that that's just one of the treasures that you provide for your readers and so much talking about this. But, yeah, so ahead of her time, even for now. And and this is such a big topic, such a big discussion. So I thought that was just a gorgeous dedication, Wally. Well, you know, Robin, um, the theme of feminism uh, sort of developed as I was writing the story. I didn't, you know, I'm not the kind of writer who says, okay, I think I'll write about this. I just sort of create (laughs) the characters and, let them do the talking and then figure out what the themes are as I go along. Um, but I, I wanted to sort of uh, depict uh, the three, what I, what I consider the three waves of feminism. You know, the first wave being uh, when women were trying to get the vote here in this country, mm-hmm. uh, the, you know, and eventual, the, the eventual 19th passing of the 19th Amendment. And then there is the second wave of feminism that comes along in the late 60s, early 70s, um, 
you know, with the Betty Friedan book and, uh, you know, marching in the streets and Mm -hmm. our bodies ourselves that, you know, the, uh, you know, that sort of, you know, classic, uh, book about, about women's, um, health and, you know, reproductive, uh, issues and so forth. And, um, and then I wanted to sort of take a look at feminism now. So I created a character named Eliza and she is, uh, Felix is the main character of the Mm -hmm. story. And she is his uh, late twenties era millennial daughter, um, who is also a feminist, but uh, it's a feminism that's different from uh, the first and second wave. So um, I kind of wanted to show the past, but also the present into the future. So cool! I just love the way you work, and I think it's so interesting to note. And your stories are so character-driven, which is why I'm so attached to them because there's nothing oh, like those fully developed or welcome characters that continue to speak to you after the story has ended on the page, but not in in your mind and in sharing it with friends. And so the way the the storyline goes and the way the characters will bring the story together, I think that's such a cool process because so many people who love to read also may have interest in writing or are writers and always looking for those nuggets, those those pearls of wisdom that an author will throw out, not even sometimes realizing how meaningful it can be, you know, yeah. and so I think that that's, if you're the kind of reader who loves character-driven storylines, Wally Lamb is more, will give you more than you could ever want i'll take you there is out and you have some exciting i'll take you there news yeah this is actually actually just broken uh news that i got uh, in uh i believe it's yesterday's new york times book review uh december 5th uh they've um they're going to announce that uh uh, I'll take you there. Has uh, made the bestseller list. And the um, so the extended bestseller list exciting. comes in at number twenty. My good fortune and my blessings continue there. That I'm uh, I'm, so I'm just exciting. really pleased with that. I'm thrilled. I was really excited and and good to note that I put it in my 2016 faves before the New York Times hit their it hit their list. So even uh you know yay it's just it's such a treat of a book. This is the holiday gift giving season, as I like to say. It's always the book giving season, and <laughs> if you get a chance to see Wally, go visit him at one of his events. Visit WallyLamb dot net. Get an autographed copy for yourself. Get one for a friend give somebody such a treat. Well, you'll write just about anything in a book, right? You know, a dedication. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes a, a complete stranger will come up to me and say, could you write? I couldn't have written this book without you. I said, eh, what the hell? All right, I'll write that. <laughs> Always giving the people what they want. And when you're, and your readers come up to you, I can only imagine the stories that are shared and the connections that people feel to your books. You mentioned um, Wishing and Hoping, and I didn't realize that they had made that into a Lifetime movie. So now yeah, mm-hmm. I've... I've added that to my arsenal of things to do this winter. <laughs> and I loved um, that you brought Felix Funicello back from Wishing and Hope. And when you wrote that small Christmas story, really, did you think yeah. that you'd bring him back? Or uh, this no, story formed I, and he worked I, out time-wise? How did you decide to do I that? Had, I had no plans to bring him back. But, um, you know, of all the I, – I don't usually write or create characters that have much to do with me personally. Mm-hmm. I like to write beyond my own experiences rather than about them. But I, I have to say that of all the characters that I've uh, created over the years, Felix is probably the closest to me. You know, we were, uh, you know, we were brought up in Eastern Connecticut, uh, mm-hmm. big Italian family. Um, I, uh, both I and Felix have uh, older sisters that, uh, you know, loomed large in our mm-hmm. lives and so forth. So, yeah, there's, a, there's some tie-ins there. I love that. And I think, you know, that book took place in the 60s. I mean, so the timing just worked, too, where you have um, Felix Funicello leading these film, uh, like a film series, like a film club, like a book club, but mm-hmm. with film mm-hmm. in this theater. That's right. And That's it's, right. So, it's, it's so charming and clever. And, you know, this is just like one of those kinds of books that you just want to tell everybody, it's like, here's a treat. Mine is the one, uh, I have the galley. That's the one that you signed. So that is my right. treasured, uh-huh. that is yeah. my treasured copy. And people will connect with this in so many ways. And one of the things that I loved on the meta book trailer that you said was the most valuable lessons in life are beautifully simple. They're not complicated. Like what are some of your favorite lessons in life or things that you like to share with people close to well, you? Well, 
I think uh, over the years I've seen played out in my own life, um, uh, as well as uh, you know, uh, my observations of others, is that um, is that love is 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 stronger um, than hatred or resentment or jealousy. Um, mm. I I believe that um, uh, forgiveness is um, is key to a to a happy life, um, and I would have to say. <laughs> That uh, more recently, in terms of uh, social media, mm-hmm. um, I, I think one of the one of the lessons I've learned is um, don't respond when you're still mad. <laughs> take take a breath and uh, decide if you really want to send out that uh, that tweet or that uh, response on Facebook. <laughs> I I think that those are wise lessons: love, forgiveness, <laughs> and take a deep breath. Those are my right. takeaways. I know there's that inclination, and it's it's so immediate. And if you have if one has impulse um, issues, <laughs> just right. <laughs> the, right, the desire to just fire that off. And right. I guess that's that old lesson of sort of write the letter, you know, maybe read it later, burn it, or, or decide to send it. But when you can just electronically get yeah. it out there. That can be dangerous um, uh, unless you don't mind apologizing. <laughs> it, right? And, and apologizing sometimes several times over because those things sort of live forever that's right right. yeah (laughs) forever it it, is really an incredible thing and something it's amazing to me sometimes to think it's something that wasn't even you know a part of our world not so very long ago i don't know where we all got to where we our destinations without gps you know (laughs) well some of us are still searching (laughs) i know that old joke about a guy asking for directions doesn't really work as well some of these things are just like gone i mean unless of course you don't plug it in but i know we're we're not as lost as we used to be and i think the idea also of just that immediate satisfaction of of getting something out there and I, I'm waiting for somebody to come out with a book of, you know, one of those little impulse books where, you know, some of the most freely expressed thoughts that never should have been on social right. media, right? One of those little with the picture and that, Hey, let's, let's do that one. So what are you working on now? Speaking of um, next brilliant ideas. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, speaking of brilliant ideas, I like yours that you just mentioned. I think, I think you should do that book. That would be fun. <laughs> Thank you. Will you blurb yeah. it for me, Wally? <laughs> I will totally blurb it for you. Now yeah. i got to write it. Thank you. I'm glad you like that. Well, I actually did have an idea for something like that once called Sorry Excuses. And it, they yeah. weren't Yeah, they weren't um, electronically sent, but the same idea. They're just so oh, out yeah. there. People's lives are so public, even more so now. Thank you for the encouragement, Wally. Yeah, so there's a lot of material that you can draw on. Oh, um, man, as, right? As, as far as what I'm working on now, well, I'm currently in the middle of a book tour, so that you know you can't really get any writing done when you're, sure. you know, living out of hotel rooms and traveling <laughs> and so forth. But um, uh, I'm starting. I, I I guess I would call it a seed that's in the ground, the seed of an idea, and I'm mm-hmm. not sure if it will germinate or not. But um, I'm I'm thinking about bringing back a character from my earlier novels. Uh, the Indian-born um, uh, psychologist Dr. Patel, and uh, I'm I'm thinking of putting a spotlight on on mm. her because she's a I, I like that character a lot and uh, I have a real fondness for her. But I don't know that much about her, but, you know, from the other books. So so maybe something to do with her. And also, um, I've uh, I've edited now two um, books with the women uh, at York Prison, where, I, uh, where I've been volunteering for uh, many years now. So many and uh, we have yeah. a stockpile of, uh, of great writing of theirs that has been you know, revised and polished. And so I may, I may edit a new collection, oh. uh, a third collection of their work. Oh, that's exciting. I was going to ask you if we had time for that. The first two couldn't keep it to myself, and the second, mm-hmm. I'll fly away. So maybe now a third volume of essays. Um, and what are, I mean, you've been doing this for so many years at your correctional institution in um, Connecticut. What are some of the things you've learned from these women through these many years? I've learned so much, Robin. Um, but I guess probably um, what I've learned uh, most of all is that. Um, uh, it's futile to try to stereotype, you know, who these women are. Mm-hmm. And I think who, who uh, are, you know, incarcerated citizens are in general, because, you know, many of them are there appropriately because they've done terrible things, but mm-hmm. um, they are not terrible people, you know, and, uh, 
And um, in, in my experience, having volunteered there for about 17 years now, um, I, you know, I've, been a, I've been a teacher all my adult life. I was a high school teacher for 25 years, and then I taught at the University of Connecticut. I ran the creative writing uh, program there. But um, I've never worked with students who um, are, want, as, as, want to get it right, want to get it better, uh, want to help other writers in the in the group and everything. So uh, wow. it's been a real it's been a life changing experience for me to work with these gals. It's just I can only imagine, and I think that it's a segment of the population. Sometimes people would rather just not think about or deal with, and they have right. so much to say, so much that people just don't know. And so these are collections that are available. Are they on? I mean, do you, are they in the store on Amazon? Go to WallyLamb.net. They're pretty much still available, and they they're getting used in a lot of uh, college classes, sociology mm-hmm. and uh, you know uh, women's uh, women's issues and so forth. So. Um, yeah, they're uh, they're around and they're available. And the, That's um, great. I'm I'm happy to say that you know I keep in touch with the women who are fortunate enough to get out of prison, and mm-hmm. I think through their writing, um, they learn things about themselves. Most of it is personal writing, and uh, they learn things about themselves that will um, uh, will help them in avoiding uh, recidivism and going right, right back to where they were. So. Um, I'm really proud of the women who have been in the program, who have gotten out and gone on to be, um, you know, productive citizens. And that's the goal after all. And so to learn from that and for them to learn from their own writing and from readers to be able to learn and that they're teaching it and including in sociology courses, that has to be incredibly satisfying. You just don't know where your work takes people. I've met more people that have talked about your books and what they've meant to them and writing and some of your students through the years. The meta book experience for your own life is just could not encapsulate enough what your readers take from what you've shared and what I know the the give and take is people can go to wallylam.net, find out where he'll be. If he's going to be near you tomorrow night, you will be at my favorite Barnes and Noble when I'm not at the one in Warwick, I'm at the one in Westport, Connecticut. So you'll be there (laughs) tomorrow night. And then this Thursday, yay at hours here in Rhode Island. And that is at seven o'clock at the Barnes and Noble in Warwick, plenty of parking, plenty of fun and all sorts of other, you were just done in Philadelphia and um, and at Lit Fest and Claudia Copcoin is my new friend. Uh, we met on Facebook she, and she's yeah, great. Yeah, she, isn't she's she's doing for she's doing for Long Island what you're doing for Rhode Island. Uh, Ex- that's what you know, we discussed. Yes, we love connecting that. Connecting readers with writers and uh, you know that uh, you know we're, we're we're we writers are really grateful for that. So um, and nobody does it better than you, Robin. And oh, uh, I think wally. you should take a bow. Um, Thank you. you know, I appreciate that on your stage sure. of vaudevillians. Uh, yeah, we did. We were kidding around because I'm from Long Island, so we were doing the Rhode Island Long Island um, <laughs> exchange program, and we're looking right. for we're looking forward to trying to do something together. And there really is nothing like connecting with a reader through books, through the passion of reading and the writers and bringing it all together because there's just this kindred spirit there. And yep. if mm-hmm. we need uplifting things to to talk about and to share and to really focus on you know that's that's where we go is is our mm-hmm. books and um our love of reading so before i let you go a book that you'd like to recommend to the listeners um everybody wants to know what their favorite authors are also reading oh In sure spare moments. um <laughs> well the um the the book that comes to mind is one that just arrived uh in the mail for me um uh, if you like to discover new writers and mm-hmm. if you like to see what's out there, you know, in, in very contemporary writers, I would recommend um, it comes out annually. It's the Pushcart Prize, uh, an, an anthology of small press writing uh, that, you know, the best of the small press is for the for the year from the year before. Oh, so um, they've just come out uh, with the uh, 41st edition of that, the uh uh, the 20, I believe it's 2017 um, collection, and they have short stories, they have uh, you know essays and uh, poetry, and some really beautiful stuff. And I like uh, I like sort of you know putting the periscope up and seeing you know who else is uh, who else is writing and who is going to be the next discovery 
that kind of thing. So I always enjoy reading that one every year, the Pushcart Prize. Okay, that's great to know. I and I like to get you get a sense of different writers, and there's something right. for everybody in those kinds of collections, and there are many authors included. So I just wrote that down, and I will yeah. include it with this because the last time that you mentioned a book, Cuckoo Land, um, Gloria Norris was so excited, and I when you were kind enough to write that beautiful description of. of the books that you liked for Evening with Authors and right. Gloria's uh-huh. coming to read at Point Street because of that connection to you. Great. You know, oh, but, yeah, yeah you'll, I mean, you'll really enjoy her and your your uh, listeners will enjoy reading Cuckoo Land. I'm so excited. The title alone, you had me at Cuckoo Land. I mean, how could you not? <laughs> you really had me at I'll Take You There. It's out by Wally Lamb. Visit his site, wallylamb.net, and go to, to Metabook and read all about what you can download and listen to and experience. And I love seeing you there in the, in the spotlight. And also the Facebook Live the other day you did at HarperCollins. That was so much fun. People loved that. Was that was a lot of fun for me. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I had so yeah. I just jumped on to say, hey, Wally. But it was just great seeing you sitting there on that stool. And people were just sort of virtually sitting at your feet listening to you share stories and answer questions. And, uh, yeah, it was really great. The energy that popped off the screen was um, – was just invigorating. Yeah. At readings, I love the Q and A, uh, and that was sort of the uh, you know social media version of the question. Oh, I like that. Period, yeah. Oh, good. Do you like that? All right. Well, make sure Katie Rendine knows lots of Q and A this Thursday at Barnes and Noble in Warwick. I will be there with my big smile on. So happy to see you again, <laughs> and uh, enjoy the rest of the tour. Congratulations on the great news about the New York Times bestseller list. For all Reading with Robin listeners, go to wallylamb.net. Put I'll Take You There on your list and get one for a friend. There's no better gift to give. Thank you so much, Wally. Robin, just keep on doing what you're doing it because you do it right.